Welcome to People and Profit, your essential business briefing. Coming up. After the recent turmoil on the stock markets, is art a good place to put your money? We're speaking to an expert from the auction house Christie's. Deals brewing in the coffee world, we're looking at the state of this $83 billion industry. Plus the French charity that gives unemployed people a helping hand preparing for job interviews. First up though, the International Contemporary Art Fair or FIAC is taking place in Paris. Works by some 1,500 artists will be on show to 75,000 potential buyers at the Grand Palais. It comes at a time when the price of art is rising. According to the industry website Art Price, the average sum paid for a contemporary work is around €24,000. Meanwhile, the global turnover from art auctions topped €7 billion Euros in the first half of the year. I've been speaking about this with Paul Nizam from Christie's. I started by asking him how important events like FIAC are for the art industry. It's an extremely important event for the art industry. It's uh, one of the biggest art fair in the world, um, along with uh, Art Basel in uh, Basel, Hong Kong and Miami and Freeze in uh, London. Uh, so it's definitely on the uh, international calendar for uh, global collectors. If you're an investor who's getting into art, is this a good place to start looking? Um, this is definitely a place where you should start looking because most uh, of the important galleries of the world gather in Paris during the fair and show the best artworks that they have um, on different categories. Um, of course, you have the masterpieces from modern and post-war art, but also younger galleries um, who are showing, showing um, more contemporary artists. Uh, so you can find material for any kind of collectors and any kind of budget as well. As a new investor, what should you start looking at? If you don't have millions to spend, where should you start looking? Um, probably with the, the youngest scene. And um, I feel that's the the, the best advice you can give to uh, someone who would like to get into that world is to buy with his eyes and not really with his ears. Uh, because um, there is, of course, a lot of art advisors and, um, and giving advice, etc., etc. But first, you need to buy something that you like, something that you trust in. Um, and um, again, FIAC has a lot to offer. Uh, at reasonable price points, um, with young artists, promising artists. Um, so it's definitely somewhere that you need to, to go. And I would say, at the same time, um, most auction houses uh, are organizing auctions uh, where we are offering the best um, of the secondary market. So um, anyone should take advantage of being in Paris and come to the auction houses and see what we have to offer at the same time. Is art a good investment? Art can be a good investment. It can be. Um, but you cannot buy art only for an investment. You uh, learn about art, um, dig into it, uh, be curious about the artists, and really like it. So it needs to be something that you like. And if you like it and get into it and learn and get knowledge about it, uh, it can definitely be an extremely good investment, of course. I'm interested in how the profile of buyers have changed in the years that you've been at Christie's. Is it the same sort of people buying art now as before, or are there, for example, more young people looking at art? There are more young people, uh, but I think the most uh, important trend is that the market is really global today. Um, we see clients coming from everywhere in the world and gather in Paris this week for the fair, for the, the, the auctions that auction houses are doing at the same time. We can see, of course, the traditional buyers from, let's say, the Western world, uh, European and American collectors, also uh, a massive uh, number of Asian collectors, uh, not only from China, but also from South uh, Eastern Ch uh, Asia. Um, Latin America as well, Middle East. So this is really a global market. Um, it's getting younger, but we still have the most important uh, senior collectors uh, who are active on the market. Now, New York is seen as the global centre of the art market, but is Paris still an important place for the industry? 
Paris has always been an important place for art uh, throughout the course of history and uh, of the 20th, the, the 20th century specifically. Uh, so it's still definitely on the map for um, the art world. Of course, it's smaller than New York, uh, but it's it's still big. It's the most important place within continental Europe. Are you seeing any impact from Brexit? Do you perhaps have investors who are moving to Paris who are interested in buying here rather than in London? I don't know if we can uh, see any specific trend at the moment, but what is true is that we've, we're, we've been seeing uh, more and more collectors, international collectors, who made the choice of not going to London two weeks before, because early earlier in October, London has a fair as well, which is a freeze art fair. And we've seen many collectors uh, making decisions not to come to London, but going to Paris instead, uh, because the material here is fantastic, extremely high quality. And of course, we have the best place to show art. I mean, Grand Palais is such a fantastic uh, building to go and see artworks. Um, so we definitely see that trend growing and growing uh, in the past season. Okay, Paul Nizam from Christie's, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you very much, bye. We're turning next to a raft of recent deals in the coffee industry. In particular, two major Italian names have been looking to expand their reach. Lavazza bought Mars' coffee business and Illy struck a deal to see industry giant JAB distribute its products. This coming as bean prices have tumbled, which has helped to boost profits. Well, for some of us, it's the best part of waking up, but it's also a massive industry that's undergone big changes in recent years. Kate Moody's been counting the beans for us, Kate. I have, Stephen. Well, coffee is the most consumed beverage in the United States and Europe. In fact, consumers drink two and a quarter billion cups every single day. The market for fresh and instant coffee was worth about $83 billion last year. It's risen by a quarter in the past five years and is predicted to continue brewing. In the U.S., much of that growth is driven by millennials, born in the 1980s and early 90s, who consume nearly half of all coffee sold. Drinking coffee has become a trend for young people in countries like China and India, where new cafes are trying to cash in on a rise in urban living and disposable income. A wide range of flavors and brewing styles means that the offerings go far beyond your regular cup of joe. Swiss giant Nestle is the unrivaled coffee king. With products including Nescafe and Nespresso, its sales accounted for nearly a quarter of the market in 2017. JAB, the parent company of brands including Keurig, Krispy Kreme and Pret-a-Manger, lagged behind with 10%, followed by Lavazza and Starbucks. Those firms have also ushered in a game changer, single-serve coffee pods or capsules. They represent the fastest growing sector in the industry, worth nearly $15 billion last year and forecast to expand up to 7% per year going ahead. In the U.S. alone, they account for over a third of coffee sales. But the convenience comes at a cost. Hundreds of millions of coffee pods are thrown out each year. The plastic and aluminum can take up to 500 years to break down, so many producers have launched recycling programs. More broadly, global warming is impacting production. Rising temperatures and erratic rainfall mean the amount of land suitable for growing coffee could be cut in half in the next 30 years. Stephen? Kate, thank you very much for that. Well, back here in France, unemployment is finally coming down, but it's still hovering around 9%. That means the competition for jobs can be fierce, especially outside of the main cities. A charity in Clermont-Ferrand in central France is giving job seekers a helping hand with interview coaching and even clothes to wear. Nick Rushworth reports. This is the showroom. You can choose from any of the clothes here. Madi Raid has got a job interview. After missing out on a couple of opportunities already, he wants to maximize his chances. His local job centre has sent him to a charity called Cravat Solidaire, where he can get a makeover. It's the right fit on the shoulders. But you're saying you want something more fitted? The first step is finding the right outfit. Sophie is helping. She is a volunteer image consultant. The showroom is packed with clothes and shoes collected in company offices or simply donated. I always explain that this is a special moment for them. We take time and make it a pleasure. 
We try to prepare for the job interview in a nice way. What matters is that the candidates leave here with a smile. They have to feel good in the clothes. I am too stressed when I go for a job interview. My head's not on right. I just don't have the right words, so it's tough. I prefer preparing in advance. That way I can know what it's going to be like. After the makeover comes some role play with the candidate taking part in a pretend job interview. This job candidate, Emily, had her makeover a while ago and is getting coaching from two of the charity association's volunteers. I do feel better. The coaching answered certain questions for me that run through my mind when I go for a job interview, why I'm not chosen. Another service offered a photo shoot for a polished CV and as a souvenir of the charity's help in boosting career confidence. Well, that's it from us for now. But if you have any questions, do find us on Facebook at France 24 Business or you can tweet me at New Stephen. Until next time, thanks for watching.